Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bubbo presenting a book talk on Amir Exhale. So Father, we ask for your anointing that we may grasp uh, the difficult aspect of this book, but understand it that we may serve our people well. Anoint me, Lord. Anoint the people who's listening in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a book that I uh, taught at uh, RUPP, and this is for RUPP students. You better watch this and respond to me. <laughs> uh, I had two classes, um, and this was one of the uh, recommended book. Was it required? No, I don't think it was required book. Uh, I think it was recommended uh, book, uh, which I do not believe anybody read cover to cover. I don't expect you to read cover to cover. I told you that you cannot read book cover to cover and try to memorize everything. This is oxymoron. That's kind of stupid thing to do. What you do is you go at it, get the stuff that you need out of this book. So why is this book important for Cambodian people? Finding zero, uh, finding zero, right? He concludes in this book at the end, our numbers always have to be translated into a binary now. Why? Because we're in computer era. Well, you, know what, you know what binary is, right? Zero to one. So everything that you type, everything, every graphic that you see, every video on YouTube watch, has an almost infinite number of zero and one, right? For example, if alphabet is A, then you type it, then it recognizes zero, one, zero, one. B, zero, one, zero, 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 one. Like that, using the binary, and then you decode that. Once you input that and decode that into color, words, amazing how the, what they've done, mathematically speaking. Now, it starts with zero. So without zero, we, we cannot have our being. Well, and he actually start finding zero because it, traditionally, traditionally, or well, actually, as he conclude, you know, the, I'll, I'll do the conclusion first. He finds it. He finds that uh, the, the stone, which uh, Socrates and I and Sakor actually went to the National Museum to check it out. Um, and this book was written 2015. So, and I did my lecture, uh, first lecture 2017. Uh, so, wow, you know, just within a few years. And, and the whole brand new stone was got into March 27, 2015, was when the stone was moved to National Museum. So this is a very recent thing. Uh, traditionally, everybody thought that earlier zero was in India, right? India, so they, everybody said, oh yeah, of course, Indian people are smart, so they probably invented zero. No, he says no, that's, you know, because, uh, the, the, the first unit zero was indicated by hasta, 270 hasta, a so measure of length. The zero in 270 is the oldest zero that can be seen in India today, right? And that dates 876 common era, right? Uh, or in Christian would be AD, right? 876 AD. But Cambodian zero dates 683 AD, 683. Wow, that's almost like 200 years, right? 200 years earlier than Indian zero, Cambodian zero was found. And of course, uh, they really uh, credit uh, Kamaruj guys to destroy everything so they couldn't really find it. Matter of fact, um, he figured it out because there was a, a French archaeologist who did extensive study on that, and he actually found uh, this tablet, uh, but it, it was trashed, and they don't know where it was. So finding the George Coetz, uh, learned about, you know, so this professor, this guy, Amir Akzer, Amir Akzer, uh, wrote extensively, especially in math, and science and and he said man this project i would like to know where the oldest zero is, where, where, where it is and and he finally found out about george coetz um, who wrote extensively and and actually identified the tablet but then the tablet was lost why because the 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 kamaruch and what happened is that 
uh, like the Buddha heads and all that, they chopped it up and they sold it. And they just, Kamaruj just devastate the nation, history, culture, uh, religion, and, uh, and just terrible, terrible deed was done. And they sort of heard that this K127, K127 was the identifier that, you know, because every artifact that's found, they identify. And the number was given K127, and it was, they heard that it could be an Angkor Conservation Center. So uh, he would write to them, write to Cambodia, write an email, and waiting, and chasing game, went to Bangkok, went to Vietnam, talking to archaeologists, and were you able to locate, on and as it's a whole story of, you know, and, and just actually up to this much, it's just story of how he got to the point of that, which you don't really have to read. My explanation is enough. Um, but then the important part comes when actually he's on site. Now he, you know, he talks about how he had a hard time with first Tuk Tuk driver and then the second Tuk Tuk driver is a smart guy named Bill, no, Mr. B. And Mr. B finally spoke little English, so he was able to go and, you know, finally went to this place. And he was not, he was at, out of nowhere. Anchor Conservation was just in the field in the Anchor uh, Siam Reap area and how he went there and he was like, he couldn't talk to anybody. Finally, he said, I'm going to systematically search. And so first hour he went there, second hour he went to the back and finally, bam, he finds that stone, right? K127 and the little label that said K127. I look in the front part of this large tablet. Oh, now let me, let's make it, let's make it dramatic. Then I just sat down in one of the stone inscriptions, wiped my forehead. It was intensely hot and humid in the deserted, airless shed and took a drink from my bottle of water. The temperature was surely over 100 degrees. I felt limp, lethargic, lethargic. Then I forced myself to get up, start examining the stones again. I thought my random search would probably not be effective and decide to look more systematically, row by row. I went back to the entrance and looked for first row, going down to the end, then continue to next row, and so on. I searched in the way for another hour, but found nothing. So he did that for two hours. Air conditioned less, out in the open, just covering over. Finally, I decided to walk behind the artifacts. I moved slowly from item to item until I came to a stone that fit the description I had with me. On its back, I saw old piece of tape pasted to the bottom of the red stone. It read K127. I could not believe my eyes. Could this be right? Had I really found it? He says. I looked in the front part of the large reddish stone and there it was. I recognized the Khmer numerals 605. Wow, India found 270 and Cambodian wrote 605. We should write a book called 605 together. Socrates, are you watching this? You need to write a book called 605, all right? Wow. And then, of course, the whole story evolves around how he now reports to the government and government officials so excited and they now want to bring it to the National Museum, on and on and on. And matter of fact, they said, why don't you write a, a description of this stone? Which, you know, last time we went to uh, there with um, Sakor and um, uh, Socrates to National Museum, you know, the, the des description on there, was actually written by him. I just found out. He wrote the description of that. Well, he, he should rightfully write it. He's the one who found it. If he wasn't for him, <laughs> he'll still be lost. That's why the researchers are needed in every every nation, that every uh, history. I mean, history is shaped by researchers. People like him. And he's not even Cambodian, man. Come on. What? And, and come by. And even now, most Cambodian I meet, they really don't care, right? That really, really is upsetting, you know? Like, they care more about, oh, I want to buy Lexus. I have Lexus, so I want to buy Range Rover next time. What up, Dunkoffs, you know? That's just my take. But, um, and then he writes, 
to all the philosopher, philosophy. He's not even a philosopher. He's a mathematician. He says this, what is the importance of zero? Zero is not only a concept of nothingness, which allow us to do arithmetic efficiently, but also a placeholding advice that enables our basis for 10 numerical system to work so that same 10 numerical can be used in different position. So he gets into a little bit of math. <laughs> but I, I think he's starting out perfectly. He says that, listen, listen, you know, this, this is very significant because the way we do math without zero, we cannot have math. You know, that's his argument, and which is true. You can, without zero, you cannot have decimal system because it starts with zero, one, two, three, four, and 10 goes back. 9, 1, 0 is what? 10. 11, 12, 13, 2, 0 is 20, 21, right? Because it's decimal. It, we, we see the world in 1 through 10. Guess what? That's not what Khmer people do, right? And the, the George Coet described the ancient Khmer number system, which was not decimal. Of course, you know that, right? That's why your number 6 is 5 plus 1. Even today, despite the borrowing of numbers above 30, which are decimal, lower number in modern Khmer are not perfectly based on 10, but also on 5 and 20. The Khmer Khmer noted use only multiple of 20, as the French do also once. So French people also in olden days, in ancient time, they didn't have decimal system. So for example, for them, 80 was 420s. <laughs> if you have 420s, that's 80. So when you say in French, 80, they used to have 420. So actually, the Khmer people, for 6 to be 5 plus 1, makes perfect sense, right? The Khmer uh, and numbers that go with it, for example, uh, 99, right? The Khmer use more of these multiples clearly in the vestige of base of 20 system due to their having 10 fingers and 10 toes, right? So in ancient times, they said, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then look at your feet, right? And then 20. So 5 and 20 has become the basis in which that you talk about numbers, describe numbers, right? What all this taught me <laughs> was the thing that the fingers and toes are really important. It's kind of a humor. You know, he's making fun. He said, oh, yeah, you know, I realized every, the humanity having 10 fingers and 10 toes, that is very important. If we had not had them or had a different quantities of them, maybe we would view numbers in a totally different way, right? So, especially this day and age, when the whole world is defined by binary of 0 and 1 and 0 and 1. Man, you should write a book. Socrates, you should write a book on what it means nothingness, zero-ness, and finding zero. You, Cambodia used zero before any other people in the world. At least there's a description of it. You know, maybe next tomorrow someone else will find. No, we found in Mexico, you know, outdates Cambodia. You know. But at least we should write about it, talk about it. Because Cambodia people are the one of the smartest people on earth was able to articulate and build Angkor Wat using this mathematical formula. It's so unfortunate that too many people act stupid right now thinking that buying new car and buying bigger house is best way to live life, which I disagree. I want to challenge you. Are you PP philosophy student? Don't talk about philosophy. Be a philosopher, right? Uh, let's, let's, let's work on that project together, hopefully. Lord, we are weak. We cannot do it because we are insecure about finance, insecure about our life. Help us, O oh God. Holy Spirit, come and inspire us that we could live a life worth following you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you in other lectures.